The name of the textbook for this course is called Embedded IoT Using Embed. So let's see if we can understand these terms, Embedded, IoT, and Embed. An embedded system is made up of a microcontroller programmed for a specific purpose within a larger system. For example, you got smart thermostats, medical equipment, household appliances like washing machines, dryers, and even refrigerators, and cars. Now cars will have a number of embedded systems. They'll have an embedded system for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, a different one for electronic fuel injection. There's probably about 15 to 20 different systems in your car. And these are all examples of embedded systems. IoT, or Internet of Things, means when you have these embedded systems connected through the Internet to provide data to the cloud. The cloud analyzes the data and sends back controlling information to the embedded system. For instance, if you have a smart thermostat connected up through the Internet to a cloud, the cloud can analyze what's going on in your house in terms of temperatures and send back controlling information to the thermostat to make your house a lot more efficient in terms of heating and cooling. Now Embed is a platform for internet connected devices based on 32-bit ARM Cortex-M, M as in Embed here, microcontrollers. This platform was developed by ARM. ARM is one of the largest suppliers of 32-bit and 64-bit microcontrollers. Now we've understood Embedded, IoT, and Embed but we've seen the word microcontroller come up a lot. So let's see what a microcontroller is. A microcontroller is a complete computer on a chip. It's known as System on a Chip or SOC. Now this is the first microcontroller ever developed and it was developed by Gary Boone of Texas Instruments back in the early 70s. At the same time, Texas Instruments was developing microprocessors. And here's some of the things that go into computers, a CPU or central processing unit. So if we compare microprocessors to microcontrollers, they both have CPUs or central processing units. They both have RAM or random access memory. They both have ROM or read-only memory and they also have I.O. or input-output. However, the way it's set up is a microprocessor has these as separate chips spread out over a motherboard and that's what a microprocessor is. It has CPU, RAM, ROM, I.O all spread out over various chips on a motherboard. However, the microcontroller has CPU, RAM, ROM, and I.O. all inside the same chip. So you got a CPU, RAM, ROM, I.O. all inside here. That makes it a complete system on a chip or SOC. So it's a complete computer on a chip. Now starting this fall of 2020, Apple is moving away from their Intel based processors and their laptops to the ARM-based A14 Bionic chip. And this is, again is a system on a chip. And we'll take a look at that shortly. You're going to find ARM-based microcontrollers and things such as smartphones from Nokia, Sony Ericsson, Samsung, and they're also used in iPhones, iPads, and iPods. And starting later this fall, as I mentioned, they're going to be in Apple laptops. The A14 Bionic that we can see here is based on 5 nanometer technology. Now what this means is that if you take a look at Intel, they've got a lot larger width to all of their connections inside their chip. And so they're up around 11 or 12 nanometer technology. And that means that they're going to run hotter. It's not going to be as efficient. Whereas 5 nanometer technology is going to be cooler. It's going to be much more efficient. And you're going to be able to get a lot more transistors inside the actual chip. 14 Bionic system on a chip has 15 billion transistors and it makes possible all these subsystems that you see here and this is what they're going to be putting into some of their laptops this fall from Apple. So they have high efficiency audio processor, low power video playback, advanced power management, high performance storage, machine learning accelerators, they have high performance CPU cores, high performance graphics processing units for gaming, they have all of these different subsystems inside here, including video to editing, cryptography, and even machine learning in here, all inside one chip with 15 billion transistors. This is going to really be a game changer. Let's now take a look at the embed development environment. You can find this at os.embed.com. Let's take a look at hardware. And let's take a look at the boards that are supported by the embed development environment. Right now there's 163 different boards 
from different manufacturers supported by the embed development environment. Now Peleon Device Ready, when if we select that, means it's going to select out of these 163 all the boards that are already set up to connect to a cloud service, which is Peleon. So if we select that out of our 163, it's eliminated a number so we have just 22 results and these are the boards now that are supported by Embed Peleon so they can actually connect to the cloud. Now we have Embed OS and the most current version of Embed OS or operating system is 6.2 so let's select that and at this point we can see that we have 20 results. Let's also see if we can find something that we can connect up to the internet so let's go with Ethernet. Let's also go with DAP link which allows us to troubleshoot right on the board without any extra hardware. Let's also look for Arduino compatibility so we can actually hook up an Arduino like shield to our board and now we're down to two results and let's just see if we have one that supports an SD card. So out of all of 163 the only one that satisfies all these conditions is the board that we're going to be using for our course. This is the first board that Embed has developed all of their platform on has been using this board and you can see it's got an Ethernet connector it's got an Arduino connector here it's got a micro SD card connector it's also got a 3D accelerometer and a magnetometer and an RGB LED on here and it shows you all the different things that this board has and that's one of the reasons uh, why we're using it in this course because every feature that Embed has this board will support as we said before, Embed deals with ARM Cortex M version processors. So it deals with M0s, and we got 18 of those. M0 Pluses, we have 16. ARM Cortex M3s, we got 16 of those. ARM Cortex M4s, which is the one we're using for our course, is 76 of those. ARM Cortex M7s, M23s, and M33s. So this is why it's called Embed. However, it has one extra one here where it's using a Cortex A9, and there's two of those. And these are pretty much used for doing cloud type operations. Let's take a look at our documentation under Embed OS. One of the things you're going to find is we have APIs and APIs stand for Application Programmers Interface and it gives us a list of all of the different functions that are available for all 163 different boards. So you program on one board and it's practically identical to programming on all other 162 boards. Now we have APIs for real-time operating system and event handling, which is more advanced than this course is going to be. But we are going to be using these drivers, such as analog in, analog out, and so forth. And let's take a look at analog in, for instance, API. And it talks about it in detail here. And it shows us our analog in class reference with all the different parameters that you can use. And it even gives you an example to get started. Now over here, we also have a cloud compiler computer that has a web browser we can actually com create and compile code and use it on our boards and you can see that I've got a few of the programs that we've got for our first lab using our embed board the Freedom K64 so if I double click here we can see that we've got basically the same sorts of things that we used in PRG 1 and 2 all we have to do is include quote embed.h quote and then we can do stuff like input equals get C, which is get character, and we can put character as well. And we also have something called standard out. And these things you should be comfortable with from PRG 1 and 2. So this is lab 2A. Let's look at 2B here. And in this case, again, this is a program to generate output to the PC screen. Notice we have two function prototypes, clear in position. And down at the bottom we have our function definitions of how those work and we have an array so we're going to be using arrays in this course just like PRG 1 and 2 so these are should be somewhat familiar to you from PRG 1 and PRG 2 and we're also going to be doing using printf and scanf as part of this course and this program will continually as it says here prompt you separately for two integer values and then will and or an exclusive or them and show them on the output screen. So this is the first real lab that we're going to be working on using this kind of coding and it's going to be very similar to PRG 
1 and 2. In the past, microcontroller courses did not support print apps and scan apps. This one does. So this is going to make things a lot easier for all of us. So this has been a quick introduction as to where we're going with this course. It gives us an idea of what the hardware is. It gives us an idea of the software before we get into the nitty-gritty of what the course is about.